Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. Tarzan has delivered the father of diamonds into the hands of Tira, queen of the Hesse hair. Tira shows him the secret passage leading to King Suten's quarters where Tarzan, Darno, Tom, and Larsen find Helen and Magra and are surprised by an overwhelming number of armed Hesse Harian guards. Larsen, the loyal Swede, is killed while defending Helen and Magra. The Atep Suten arrives and orders the three men confined to the chamber of Menot, the chamber of death. Because of Hakeru's promised help, Tarzan quietly submits. Helen and Magra are dressed in white tunics and covered with magnificent jewel-studded gold ornaments by Hesiherian slave women. They are led to the ceremonial hall where the double marriage is to be solemnized. In the underground chamber of death, Tarzan discovers a stone which pivots, disclosing a pitch-black opening. On hands and knees, Tom and Darno follow Tarzan into the tunnel. There comes to them the distant warning roar of an animal. Cautiously they proceed to emerge abruptly into a lighted pit-like chamber. Monsieur Tarzan, look, that beast, what is it? A saber-toothed tiger. Hurry down, Tarzan, look out, it is going to charge. Tiger! Tiger! Look out, Tarzan, those teeth, they are like daggers. As Darno shouts, Tarzan springs to one side. The great cat misses its prey. The brief second it takes to turn and face Tarzan is a fraction of an instant too long. With one bound, the ape man lands astride the tawny back. In his hand, the knife, flashing like a blue snake, buries itself deep in the lion's shoulder. The brute catapults itself and his human burden high in the air. Like a band of steel, Tarzan's left arm encircles the beast's throat. As it drops back to the floor, coughing hoarsely and clawing in the air with great talent paws, the knife finds its mark again and again in the strange creature's heart. The ape man throws himself clear. As Darno and Tom stare wide-eyed, the fierce prehistoric animal staggers, stumbles, falls to the stone floor, dead. Mon Dieu, Tarzan, I thought for once you had found something too big, strong, even for you. He was strong. Stronger than any animal I've ever fought. What did you call him, Tom? A saber-toothed tiger. Almost as ancient a beast as the Tyrannosaur we met at the cave. Mm. Uh, but now that he is dead, we must find a way out of here. Yes. And over there is a bronze door. Come on. The light-colored stone there. Press it, Tom. Ready, Darno? Or whatever may be behind this door. Why, oh, yeah. A lighted corridor and no thing in sight. Those steps at the far end, cut out of the solid rock. Come on. May, I do not think that they ascend high enough to bring us to the ground level, though. I think you're wrong, Donald. See how the light reflects from that wall? There must be a turn there, and then on up. Here we go. In the great ceremonial hall above Tarzan and his companions, there is set a scene of barbaric magnificence of savage splendor. At the far end of the chamber, the regally garbed Atef Suten reclines upon his marble throne. Grouped behind him is the dread council of thirteen, 
headed by the venerable, white-bearded, beady-eyed high priest, Neshem. Occupying the stone wall benches round the vast chamber are the nobles, men and women, of our share, silent, intense anticipation. Gleaming golden ornaments set with flaming gems, the short white tunics of the women, the long voluminous robes of the men, all illuminated by the soft, weird incandescence of the myriad blue-flamed lamps. The patriarchal high priest Neshem bows low before King Suten. Behold, O king, it is the appointed hour, and thy queen Tira hath not yet appeared. It is at my command, Neshem, that Tira remaineth in her chamber. Over long hath the land of Hesihair and its people suffered under her unruly tongue, her uncontrollable temper. Today, as I warn thee, I take to wife the stranger from the outer world, Helen Gregory. Tira shall no longer be queen of the Hesse Hair. And thy subjects, O king, thou wouldst prepare them for this change in the royal family? Thou art right. I shall speak. Watch, Hamlet, Atef Suten, Ashu, M. Tira. <laughs> Seest thou, priestly one? Tira findeth no favor in the eyes and hearts of my subjects. They are ready to bow before a new queen. Let the trumpet sound the sacred tones. Et shabu! As the bronze trumpets ring out, the massive entrance doors swing majestically open. Through the great portal step Helen and Margra, richly, barbarically garbed. Behind them, in gleaming bronze chain mail, strides Hakeru, leading an armed military escort of honor. The faces of the young women are drawn and strained. With heads held high, they step across the threshold and stand, waiting. Meanwhile, Tarzan, Tom, and Arno have climbed the seemingly endless stairway with its many twists and turns. Tarzan, who is leading, sees before him a broad landing, literally flooded with the pale blue light. Arno, Tom, hurry, make no noise. Yes, Kiliat, Tarzan. Ah, this archway is directly across from the king's throne. Uh, entirely barbaric. Oh, magnificent. Good heavens, see there. Just inside those bronze doors, Margaret and Helen Gregory. Come on, we'll stop this. Yes. Wait, let us remain here where we can see and yet not be seen until we find out what the ultimate meaning of this ceremony is. You have a raison, Tom. He is right, Tarzan. It will do no harm to wait a little. Ah, voila, Sutan lifts his hand. Listen. Come on, Hakeru. Come forward and escort the two maidens from the outer world to the royal presence. Look at them, both frightened to death inwardly, yet outwardly calm and cool. Helen Gregory, Magra, make obeisance before the throne of the Hesse Hair. Atal Hakeru, ascend to thy rightful place beside thy king. Thy word is law, O Suten. Neshem, O high priest, intone now the sacred word to join Helen Gregory with myself and Atan Hakeru with the woman Magra in wedlock. Let there be sung the anthem of Hesse Harrier. Now, O oh High Priest, perform thy sacred office. Stop! That's enough! Come down, O oh, Tom. Coming, Tarzan. Hello, move you. Stop all! Stop all you're here! Curse! Silence! What meaneth this? How come ye three here? Hakeru, knowest thou aught of this? Nay, O oh, Suten. I left them secure in the chamber of Minot from which no man hath yet escaped. Atan Hakeru, thou liest! Thou art convicted by thine own words, for no one hath ever escaped from the chamber of Minot. Thou shalt pay for this deception with thy life. Nay, O Atef, I swear it. I know not how these three came here. He's telling the truth, Suten. He had nothing to do with our escape from your pet cat. We found our way out ourselves. 
And thou camest unharmed through the dungeon, guarded by Yendi, the tiger with the ivory tusk? We came through that tiger's den unarmed, Sutan, but your tiger did not fare so well. He is dead by the hand of Tarzan. Hark! Silence! What sayest thou? Yendi dead? But, but it is impossible. Yendi hath the strength of twenty men. He hath slain for me a dozen giant slaves of twice the girth and statue of this Tarzan. Nevertheless, Sutan, your saber-toothed tiger is dead. Very dead. So, so, Yendi, the great cat of Hesse hair, is dead. Tarzan of the apes, thou art in truth a mighty fighter. Yet Tarzan kills only in self-defense or in defense of his friends. Only in self-defense, thou sayest? <laughs> so, thou art a mighty man in battle. <laughs> well, thy great strength. O oh, man of might shall be put to the test, now and here. Take care, Tarzan. That savage is planning some impossible trial for you. Just give the word, mon ami, and we will show him how three men can die. Wait, Arnold. Helen Gregory, take thy place in the Queen's royal chair. Magra, at the feet of Helen Gregory. Shall we, Tarzan? Do as he says, until we find out what's going to happen. Come, Helen. We have nothing to fear now. And now, O oh, Nesham... Tell thou this mighty fighter the decree of the Council of Thirteen. Tarzan of the Apes, it is the decree of the Council of Thirteen that thou must meet in battle Goram, the savage leader of the sacred tribe of talking apes. Church! Thou hast killed one of Goram's band. Two others thou hast made helpless with thy rope. Goram hath twice the strength of any member of his tribe. He desireth to taste thy blood. Sakurai, Tarzan. Those apes are terrible. Say the word, Tarzan, and we shall wait. Shand! Tarzan! Shand! He got no Tarzan! And our team! From the pit in the center of the sick chamber, there clambers forth giant simian. The brute is half again as large and ferocious as the others Tarzan has seen. The monster's face is contorted with black rage. His thick lips are drawn back, revealing great fighting fangs. Do you understand anything he said, Tarzan, other than your name? Two words. Fight and dead. Get out of the way, Darno. Here he comes. With great hairy red arms swinging, the savage brute charges Tarzan with an ear-splitting shriek. Bigger! Bigger!